one moment that was insane that we just want to show. And if you missed it, you got to wake you up for week three on a Monday morning. Peter, who do you got? There's always plays that have greater significance. Last year, when the Chargers were coached by Anthony Lynn, they played the Chiefs in a week two game, and it was a fourth and one late in the game. And Anthony Lynn decided, okay, let's not mm -hmm. go for it, and let's put some points on the board. And Mahomes came right down the field and beat them in heartbreaking fashion. Yesterday, it's a fourth and five, and there's a field goal attempt. There's a false start on Rashawn Slater. It goes to fourth and nine. It would have been very easy in a tie game for Brandon Staley to say, let's punt the ball away, mm -hmm. let's take a long field goal. Brandon Staley sends out Justin Herbert and says, let's go for mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. in Kansas City on the road. My espresso moment is an incomplete pass that had a flag because it was so symbolic, <laughs> so symbolic of what these Chargers are going to be. Okay, you said it last segment, exercising demons. Yes. This was exercising a demon of not letting Mahomes break our heart in the end. We're going to go for it. We're going to have our quarterback try to make a play. The fact that Brandon Staley on fourth and nine in Chargers territory, or in Chiefs territory, mm -hmm. says, no, 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 no punt team, no field goal team. I know we just had a false start. I'm going for it. That tells you everything you need to know about what this Chargers team is going to be about. And I love that Brandon Staley did it. Got me off the chair. Let's go. Oh, man. They did it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I don't know how much coffee it takes to get yeah. you. The espresso God. shot might not be enough. Do you yeah. know who needed some coffee yesterday, Shrags? Who needed it? The Cardinals yes, did. Yes, they did. At certain points of this game, I'm like, you want us to take you seriously in the NFC West? Let's go. You're up against Jacksonville. Get some espresso. And then they did just that. This was a really fun watch. They were down in Jacksonville. Seconds remaining in the third quarter. Trevor Lawrence rolls out. He tosses it to the sideline. It comes... Uh, in comes in. Let's take a look here. Here's Trevor, the rookie, trying to make his thing. Byron Murphy, out of nowhere, picks it up, and he takes it all the way in for the score. This is what put Arizona back in the lead. They needed this. They needed the shot of coffee. This woke them up and let them, I, I'm going to say, escape Jacksonville with the win, keeping their status, I think, as an NFC contender intact, and it sets up a ginormous coffee-filled week four matchup against the Rams, which mm. I'm so Ooh. excited about. Kyle. Three and O versus three and O. Yeah. That's the one. And you guys really had me in my feelings about Hello. that survivor pick on the road. <laughs> Hello. And I was like, I don't want to lose that. People don't gamble. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, how dare you? <laughs> you know where you are. Uh, we do a survivor pool every single week, and Kay picked the Cardinals on the road. You both went, oh, yeah. you both clutched your pearls. Road on teams me. I was is like, tough. What's going on? So you did need that. But the reason you needed that place so much as well goes to my backstory. I used to live in South, South Orange County, and while everyone else in L.A. was going to USC games, USC-UCLA games, my wife and I used to drive down the 5 freeway and go to University of San Diego games at Torero Stadium. Okay. And I remember I went one year, I think it was 2016, and I remember being like, who the hell is number 26 playing for USD? He was a corner, and he was a kick returner, and yesterday he had a 109-yard play against the Arizona. Let's just roll this thing. You, you I saw, saw this guy in play college. in college. This is the USD program. Their head coach used to be Jim Harbaugh back in the day. They've had some good pros here and there, but Agnew was a corner and returner. I saw him come before he came out, and here he comes out from nine yards deep. Gold, I know we're going to talk about this, but there is a 109-yard club. You guys remember Devin Hester mm -hmm. against the Giants? I think Nathan Vasher might have yep. flirted with it once in that orange jersey. Nathan Vasher! Yeah, from the Bears back yeah. in the day. Um, we watched this play in stages. First, you're like, oh, this is interesting. They're going to try a really long field goal. Oh, they got a guy back there. Oh, he caught it. Oh, he's going to run it out. Oh, my God. And then, of course, Gus Johnson was on the call, and we'll play it later in the show. Jamal Agnew has done this several times. This is not the first time he did it last week. He did it in Detroit when you were with him. He is a game breaker. He's going to be on a bad team this year. I get it, but respect him. I think it was a fifth-round pick 2017. I know you were there, Golden. Tell us about Jamal Agnew in a 109-yard play. I mean, the, the kid is special. Yeah? He, he can fly. And he's quick, and to combine those things, it's 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 fun to watch. I mean, I I never would try to race him, um, but yeah, yeah, but it was impressive. I uh -huh. mean, you you got to figure someone's going to tackle him, but then they just don't. Mm -hmm. um, and and this reminds me of a story. So on Saturdays is when we all do the the one timers, like you know that 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 type of play mm -hmm. where it's rarely going to happen, if ever. Like I've you know haven't been part of a game where it's happened, or you know last four plays, and I know on Saturdays I'm like. All right, it's time for my nap. Oh, because I'm going to be at the hotel until 8 o'clock. Uh -huh. yep. Come on, let's wrap it up. I'm, I'm tired. But after seeing that, it woke me up. I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it actually happened. It happened. And so that was my espresso moment. And wow, I mean, you practice that once every night, you know, on, on a Saturday, and it comes, it pops up, and 109 yards later, and a touchdown. 
Did, did you say it's never happened to you? Those moments and all of the Saturdays that you've spent in those—that's wild. Yeah, you mean all those dumb lateral plays and stuff you work on that on Saturdays, like that's, yes, the, it's in slow it. motion yeah. and you're kind of like with your bucket hat on, like kind of messing around. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder they never work. <laughs> and then there it goes. That's amazing. Small Agner, be, have a day. And that will be on the long show. No doubt. That'll be the longest one ever. <laughs>